Welcome to Client School. Today we're going to talk about what it takes to make a good client. A lot of people, when they start into a divorce or other kind of family law situation, whether it be a paternity or parentage action, or a, they've already been a divorce and you're looking at a child custody dispute or an alimony dispute or bill payings, debts, things like that, you need to know what you can do to help keep your costs down and move your case forward. Now here's some things that it's human nature that people fall prey to. They get angry enough to hire a lawyer, or at least to come out and speak to a lawyer and say, all right, I need help, I can't go it alone. By the way, feel free to look into whether you can and should handle a case by yourself. We're happy to tell you about that. We're not going to discourage you if it's something you don't need a lawyer to do. But I digress. You decide you finally, you've got to go see an attorney. You've got to talk about what your rights are, and you're probably going to end up hiring one. At least you're resigned to that possibility. So then the attorney tells you, here's what I need from you. That attorney may say, I need these documents, or I need you to take these steps. And so you sign the contract and you pay your money, but then you don't do what your attorney says. Now, if your attorney is giving you busy work, then just fire your attorney and get another one. I can't imagine why an attorney would ever give you busy work. And you have to keep that in mind. Your attorney, when he asks for documents, needs those documents to prepare your case, either to support your claims or your defenses, sometimes in, in most cases, both. Make sure you get the documents. It is not, a, and I know what you're thinking, some of you watching this say, well, if I say I can't find them, then I'll be excused from having to give those documents up and we'll figure out some other way to address the problem. No, that's not true. If you are asked for tax returns, get your tax returns. If you really don't know where your tax returns are or you lost them, then you are, you are responsible to get a copy and you can get those from the Internal Revenue Service and from the state of Utah. You'll have to do it. It's not one of those things where they just hoped you had them and if you say, I don't, and pull out your pockets and show they're empty, that you'll be excused from having to produce tax returns when tax returns are required. Same thing happens with pay stubs. Anybody who has a job and gets paid with a, pay, with a paycheck and a pay stub, how are you going to tell people you don't have your pay stubs? Even if you don't hoard them all in a drawer somewhere, each week or two weeks or month or so, you're going to get pay stubs. Hang on to them. And even if you really just light them on fire as soon as you receive them, which is a story nobody will believe, then go to your HR department or your boss and say, I need a printout or a report of my pay stubs for the last three months or year or whatever the amount of time is it's being requested. By the way, it's usually for a full year. Tax returns, pay stubs, debts, receipts, things that prove what your expenses are, these are documents your lawyer wants to help you. By having those in his hands, your lawyer can help make a better case for you. Your lawyer may also send you things to fill out. He may send you a financial declaration where you talk about your income, your earnings, your unearned income, like trust income or rent income or things like that, what your debts are, what your liabilities are, what your assets are. Fill that out and do it completely. Again, some people have the mindset that if they claim they can't do it or they just can't get around to it, people will say, well, it wasn't really important. We were just trying to see how much we could get you to do, but if you won't do it, we'll just forget about it. The court will not do that. Fill out your financial declaration and fill it out completely and fill it out accurately. It is not a situation where if you just leave out certain income, nobody else can find out about it. If your spouse already knows you have a second job, what good is it in not re disclosing that in your financial declaration? It just doesn't make sense. Be honest. You'll also be given initial disclosures. That's another form that you may be given or an information sheet that asks for all the witnesses that help to support your case. You have to identify them by name, address, telephone number, and a short description of what they know and what they would testify to. I can't tell you how often we get those back with nothing filled out on the initial disclosures form. We need those to help you. And it slows your case down and makes it more expensive if we have to keep hounding you to get it. I know you don't want to talk about it. I know that it's something you don't want to think about. I know that it's uncomfortable and discouraging and depressing. But you're not going to be able to get away with not doing it. You're not going to be let out of it. Work on that too. Here's another thing that will help. Sit down and say to yourself, what am I willing to spend on this case, win or lose, before I'm willing to go forward and grab the bull by the horns and start this case? Yeah, people come to me on occasion and they say, I love my kids so much, money is no object. Well, I love my kids a lot too, but if I don't have enough money to have my child get that life-saving operation, I may weep, I may be devastated, but 
that's not a measure of my love for my children. If despite everything I've done, I can't pay for that life-saving operation and my child dies, I gotta be honest with you folks, I'm not gonna beat myself up over the fact that I didn't have enough money. If you tell that to me saying money is no object, I'm not gonna get greedy and say, well, I'll bill you as much as I possibly can. But you need to understand that I need to know how much money you've got to spend so I can figure out how much service I can provide and figure out where that service is best provided for you to get the most bang for your buck and the best value you can ask for. So if you've only got a few thousand dollars to spend on a case, and you'll know that, if you know what your discretionary income is, tell me. Well, you don't have to tell me exactly. I'm going to find out anyway when you fill out your financial declaration. But you can tell me how much money you want to spend and then I can tell you what I can do to help you if I can help you at all. It's kind of funny, every now and then people will come in and they'll say, well, it doesn't matter how much it costs, I'll pay whatever it takes, and I'll say, all right, how much did you have in mind? And they'll say, like, $800. Let me tell you something, $800 gets maybe two or three hours worth of work done at best. So if you're not prepared to pay thousands and thousands of dollars for good legal work, then you're probably in a position where you ought to represent yourself or just not file your lawsuit at all. I can't do the job well unless I am paid well to do it. And nobody can, whether that be your plumber or your auto mechanic or anybody else. Asking people to give it away for free or to reduce the rates to ridiculous lows won't get you what you want. In fact, you'll actually be wasting your money because somebody that takes your money at a, dis at a steeply discounted rate is someone who simply takes your money. That person cannot afford to do the work. That person just takes your money and probably lies to you about what's being done or does such a lousy job or farms it out to an associate or paralegal and doesn't give you what you actually want. That person does a job for the money he was paid but doesn't actually give you what you're looking for. Know what your budget is. Think about what you want to spend and be honest with your attorney about that. Tell your attorney what you're looking for to have done for the price you're willing to pay. That's it for Client School today. We hope to see you again.